So last night I did a video of this one. Um, I calculated the capacity of the tank and the RPM on the wheels, size on the wheels and stuff. Uh, it's a 40 gallon tank and it's, I'm running the uh, Amazon Harbor Freight style two cylinder V air compressor. Um, supposed to be a 17 and a half. I'm suspecting that's free air. Um, I, I, what I calculated was it's probably going to be about a 15.4 at 90. Um, if I was spinning it at full speed at 1100 RPM. Um, I currently am running a 5 inch pulley on the motor. And it's, uh, the original wheel is like 13 and 7 eighths I believe. It's probably a metric but basically equivalent of about 13 and 7 eighths. Um, that puts the pump spinning at just over 600 RPM. So really detuned for what that pump's capable of. And according to the math, it's like 9 or 9.1 CFM. Um, not clear if that's at 90 or if that's free air. But I, that's the way I've been running this pump for like two years. And it's, it's worked really well for me. Um, I am planning on spinning it up a little bit because I got a lot of sandblasting coming up here. So uh, I figured I might as well spin her up and get the air out of it and, you know, get the air that it's supposed to be doing. Um, I just had to replace the switch on it. I, I burnt my contacts up finally after after two years. So, um, But yeah, this whole build, I was given the tank and the, and the motor. I believe that's a barn cleaner or a silo unloader. It's either a five or a five and a half horsepower. Um, I was initially, I was going to run that tank as an auxiliary tank for blasting when I used my original compressor but uh then long story i'll get to on that in a minute but uh so what i ended up doing was building this because when i when i bought this pump i i wasn't sure about putting it on there it seemed a little bulky i was gonna have to change some things and and i wasn't sure that that's what the route that i wanted to go with at the at the time so i saw that you know i had all this stuff and i thought well i'll i'll build this instead and I'm glad that I did. I, I, I've been really happy with this. The pump was $155 on Amazon. I don't know how much they are at Harbor Freight. Um, uh, the check valve in here, I believe, was about $17 and $19. Um, I just ran it with the pulley that was on it just to get it going and try. And, you know, that belt cost me about 18 bucks, something like that. Um, these switches are between thirty and forty dollars, depending upon what style you get. You know, the, um, the original one that I had on here had the the check valve and the pressure gauge right into it. But as you can see, that this this switch was uh, twenty eight bucks, um, and then I cobbled together some fittings to be able to put the pressure gauge and the check valve in there. Um, had the unloader, which is really important, and. Uh, yeah, I've been been really happy with that. Um, like I said, it's it's spinning around. It's it spins the pump at around a little over 600 RPM. So if if I'm getting nine CFM out of that at 600, I'll, I'll be in some pretty good air once I get her spun up to the eh, thousand eleven hundred that it's it, you know it's it's rated for eleven hundred I, I believe. Now this pump, this is the pump that I have had for oh boy. 20 years, uh, the, the tank uh, was built in 95, yeah, built in 95, um, yeah, December 6th of 95, and uh, I bought this, like I said, 20, 20 plus years ago, and it was like $425 back then, which... Uh, the week later, they went on sale for $50 less, and, and Fleet Farm, actually, I, I took my receipt in, and they, they credited me the $50 difference, so that was nice, so I got, you know, I, it was $375, and and I have worked this thing hard over the years. When I was healthier, I was using this thing a lot. I did a lot of sandblasting, a lot of powder coating, run the impact, air tools, all that. I, I, I worked this thing hard. And I've had at least twice where when I was away and and ended up leaving it on, 
that I had a, one time an airline blew and another time there was, uh, I don't remember if it was a fitting or what, but it was leaking and it ended up running and running and running. And one time it just overheated the pump, or I mean the, the motor, overheated that, blew the circuit breaker and shut it down. Thank God for overload protection. Um, and uh, the other time about mm, three years ago, uh, in the winter, the line blew and it ran until it seized the pump up and then it made all it was all yeah that was a mess so and then i ended up buying the compressor off of ebay the pump which it was, it was like 90 bucks and i the first one when i was filling the oil it was the the oil comes down and fills in the sight glass first and then it must have been air locking or something because it would show that it was full. And I thought, man, that you know, that's not much oil in there. And it wouldn't take any more. It kept it, would, you know. So thought I had enough oil in there. And when I was doing a break in, it ended up seizing one of the pistons and locking her up. And it ripped the the pulley on the motor right apart. It was just a nightmare. Ruined the belt, everything. Uh, talked to the seller and and ended up getting a new one they wanted me to you know they wanted to pay me to or they were going to give me a credit like forty dollars to have it fixed locally and like well hey nobody around you is gonna gonna bother with that and it's gonna cost more than what the pump was and so finally what i ended up settling on doing was i told them well i'll i'll pay you what it would cost me to ship it back if you send me a new one you know because i i was going to be out the shipping for shipping it back either way so i figured this way at least I'm getting a pump for what it would cost me to ship it back. So they sent me another one, and I put this one in. And what I what I found out is when you're filling it, yeah, even though it fills up and acts like it's full and overflow, you you gotta tip the pump around and make sure that it's not locking air in the sight glass to make sure that you got enough oil in there. And uh, the other thing that I noticed is uh, with I don't know what the deal is is this this. I'm thinking this pulley must have been a little bit different size than the original pump because uh, when I replaced this pulley and put the same size pulley on, I, it's it's not spinning at full full capacity yet. I gotta I'm I'm gonna um, turn it on here in a minute and measure the the RPM on that show, and then I'm also gonna do a, a CFM test with it too. So um, just so you know, it's it's gonna get really loud in here momentarily once I once I turn this on but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it in and then I'll grab the phone again and uh, the tachometer and do the rpm and then I'm gonna put the phone in the stand to watch the watch the pressure here um, and I'm gonna have to so looks like we're at about 42 psi in there right now so I'm going to need to remember that for when I do the calcula calculations for the CFM on it. But, so, all right. Hang on for a minute. I'll get you in the stand here. Motion sickness. Oh, geez. Get my hands over here. Okay. So now I'll get her. Oh. Yeah, I need a more rigid stand for my phone yet. So I'm going to get it plugged in and grab the tachometer and then we'll, we'll uh, do some, some calculations here. <laughs> is spinning 35.50 basically. Yep, 3550 RPM. And or the motor, I mean. The motor was 35.50. And the pump is 750. And this pump should be running around 1200 RPM, so I, I can speed this up quite a bit. I think when I did the math on this uh, the first time that I had it, that it put together before, I found an oil leak by the way, uh, that, that's what I was fixing, so that's why it was apart. But uh, I think I was in the like 5.4 CFM range with it. I was not pleased with that, but then, it, then I realized I needed to test the RPM. And, so, so we'll run her up to pressure and 
patience for, so that'll work for doing the calcs. 